In this video, we will introduce you to equilibrium constant expressions. Chemical equilibrium is a dynamic process when the forward and the reverse reactions are happening at the same rate, and the overall concentrations of the reactants and products are not changing. We will also be talking about the differences between homogeneous and heterogeneous expressions. When we say that chemical equilibrium is a dynamic process, we mean that the molecules of the reaction are in constant motion and are continuously changing. But we also said that chemical equilibrium means that the overall concentrations of reactants and products are not changing. How can we connect the two ideas? The overall concentrations of reactants and products are not changing when a reaction is at equilibrium, but the individual molecules may be changing from products to reactants or from reactants to products. Equilibrium means that a chemical reaction can have some reactants and products in its final state, it reaches a balance, and that it doesn't reach a point where all the reactants are used up, and all you have is products, it doesn't have a beginning and an end. This means that as a reaction proceeds, a point is reached where even though the molecules are moving back and forth, the amount of molecules that are moving back and forth are equal. We also mentioned the rates of the reaction, in that when equilibrium is reached, the rates of the forward and the reverse reaction are equal. Take for example a reaction where the reactants are in equilibrium with the products. An equilibrium arrow is different than a reaction arrow, in that an equilibrium arrow is double-sided. There are a couple different ways you might see an equilibrium arrow drawn, but they all mean the same thing. At equilibrium, the double-sided arrows mean that the rate of the forward reaction, where reactants become products, equals the rate of the reverse reaction, where products become reactants. Rate equals a constant times the concentration of the reactant. So this means that the forward rate constant times the concentration of the reactants equals the reverse rate constant times the concentration of the products. We can rearrange the equation to come up with the rate constant of the forward reaction divided by the rate constant of the reverse reaction equals the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. The rate constant is represented by a lowercase k, but the ratio of the forward rate constant to the reverse rate constant is represented by a capital K. Capital K is given a special name of equilibrium constant. I always say that equilibrium is a student's favorite topic because equilibrium constants have no units. Say we have a generic equation where a coefficient r and a reactant is in equilibrium with a coefficient p and a product. The equilibrium constant expression equals the concentration of the products raised to their coefficient p in the balanced equation divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to their coefficient r in the balanced equation. Since the equilibrium constant equals products over reactants, if the equilibrium constant is large, greater than 1, then the concentration of products is greater than the concentration of reactants, and we say that the reaction is products favored. This means that the reaction will tend to go in the forward direction and it will create more products. If the equilibrium constant is small, less than 1, then the concentration of reactants is greater than the concentration of products, and we say that the reaction is reactants favored. This means that the reaction will tend to go in the reverse direction, and it will create less products. For example, for the reaction CO gas plus H2O gas in equilibrium with CO2 gas plus H2 gas, the concentration versus time graph looks like this. As you can see, the concentrations of the reactants decrease, and the concentration of the products increase. When is equilibrium reached? When the concentration of the reactants and the products are no longer changing. At equilibrium, CO2 and H2 are being formed at the same rate as they are reacting to reform CO and H2O. The reaction rate versus time graph looks like this. In this graph, you can see that equilibrium is reached when the forward rate equals the reverse rate of the reaction. For this reaction, CO gas plus H2O gas in equilibrium with CO2 gas plus H2 gas, the equilibrium constant expression is the concentration of CO2 times the concentration of H2 divided by the concentration of CO times the concentration of H2O. 
All of these concentrations are raised to the coefficients in the balanced equation, but they are all one, and we do not usually write when things are raised to the first power. This equilibrium constant is given a subscript of C, because this is the concentration equilibrium constant. This equilibrium constant can also be represented by the partial pressures of the reactants and products because they are all gases. In this case, the equilibrium constant is given as a subscript of P, and it equals the partial pressure of CO2 times the partial pressure of H2 divided by the partial pressure of CO times the partial pressure of H2O. Let's consider this reaction to write the equilibrium constant expression N2 gas plus 3 H2 gas in equilibrium with 2 and H3 gas. In this case, we do have coefficients before the reactants and products. And remember, we raise the concentrations or the partial pressures to these coefficients. The concentration equilibrium constant expression equals the concentration of NH3 squared divided by the concentration of N2 times the concentration of H2 cubed. The pressure equilibrium constant expression equals the partial pressure of NH3 squared divided by the partial pressure of N2 times the partial pressure of H2 cubed. Up until this point, we have only considered equilibrium constant expressions of reactions containing gases. These are called homogeneous equilibrium reactions because their phases of matter are all the same. What about other phases of matter? When we say concentration of something, we usually think of aqueous solutions whose units are in molarity. When we say the partial pressure of something, we usually think of gases whose units are in atmospheres. In fact, the unit of concentration of Kc is molarity and the unit of pressure of Kp is atmospheres. Both of these phases of matter, aqueous solutions and gases, are included in equilibrium constant expressions because they both have concentrations. What about pure solids and pure liquids? Their concentrations are constant at a constant temperature. For a pure solid and a pure liquid, their concentrations are equal to their density divided by their molar mass. At a constant temperature, the density is a constant. Of course, the molar mass is always a constant for a given substance. Since pure substances have constant concentrations, we ignore them in heterogeneous equilibria. Any reaction that has different phases of matter included in it are examples of heterogeneous equilibrium reactions. Now we will work on problems using the concepts discussed in this video. 1. At 700 Kelvin, the forward rate constant for the gas phase reaction between NO and O2, forming NO2, is 4.7 times 10 to the 6 molar to the minus 2 times seconds to the minus 1. The rate constant for the reverse reaction at this same temperature is 0.54 molar to the minus 1 times seconds to the minus 1. What is the value of the equilibrium constant K at 700 Kelvin? Is this reaction product or reactant favored? Remember the definition of the equilibrium constant in terms of rate constants. The ratio of the forward rate constant to the reverse rate constant equals the equilibrium constant K. So we are solving for the equilibrium constant. Plug the numbers in and you have 4.7 times 10 to the 6 molar to the minus 2 times seconds to the minus 1 divided by 0.54 molar to the minus 1 times seconds to the minus 1. This equals 8.7 times 10 to the 6 which equals the equilibrium constant. Since it is an equilibrium constant, it will have no units, even though the units of the rate constants are different. To answer the second question about the reaction being product or reactant favored, look at our value of the equilibrium constant K we just calculated. It is much greater than 1, therefore we will have more products at equilibrium and the reaction will be product favored. 2. Write expressions for Kc and Kp for the following reactions. A. 2ClO gas in equilibrium with Cl2 gas plus O2 gas. B. Fe solid plus CO2 gas in equilibrium with FeO solid plus CO gas. C. Ca3PO4 2 solid in equilibrium with 3Ca2 plus aqueous plus 2PO4 3 negative aqueous only write a Kc expression. D. CH4 gas plus H2O liquid 
in equilibrium with 3H2 gas plus CO gas. To solve this problem, it is best to understand by using a generic equation for Kc and Kp. For this reaction, A, A gas plus B, B gas in equilibrium with C, C gas plus D, D gas, Kc will equal the concentration of only the aqueous or gaseous products raised to their coefficients in the balanced equation, divided by the concentration of only the aqueous or gaseous reactants raised to their coefficients in the balanced equation. Therefore, Kc will equal the concentration of C raised to the power C times the concentration of D raised to the power D, divided by the concentration of A raised to the power A times the concentration of B raised to the power B. Kp will equal the partial pressure of C raised to the power C times the partial pressure of D raised to the power D divided by the partial pressure of A raised to the power A times the partial pressure of B raised to the power B. Remember, only gases and aqueous solutions are in equilibrium constant expressions. Pure solids and liquids are not. For letter A, we have all gases, so Kc will equal the concentration of Cl2 times the concentration of O2 divided by the concentration of ClO squared. The Kp expression is the partial pressure of Cl2 times the partial pressure of O2 divided by the partial pressure of ClO squared. For letter B, we have two solids and two gases. One solid and one gas are on each side, the reactants and the products. We can ignore the two solids and concentrate on the two gases. The Kc expression is the concentration of CO divided by the concentration of CO2. The Kp expression is the partial pressure of CO divided by the partial pressure of CO2. For letter C, we have a solid breaking down into two aqueous ions, and it tells you to only write the Kc expression. This is because we have no gases in this reaction, and only gases can have partial pressures. The Kc expression is the concentration of Ca2 plus cubed times the concentration of PO43 negative squared. For letter D, we have mostly gases but one liquid. We will ignore the liquid and just concentrate on the gases. The Kc expression is the concentration of H2 cubed times the concentration of CO divided by the concentration of CH4. The Kp expression is the partial pressure of H2 cubed times the partial pressure of CO divided by the partial pressure of CH4.